Vasily Lomachenko outpoints, schools, and even beats up Richard Comey over 12 to win by unanimous decision. This, in my opinion, was vintage Lomachenko. He pulled out all the stops for this fight, offensively, defensively. There were the feints, the probes, the straight shots, the hooks, the uppercuts, to head and body, the angles, the side steps, the back steps, the head movement, just all of it. And the only thing that was really missing from this fight was a stoppage victory. Other than that, he completely schooled Richard Comey and buzzed him several times, dropped him in the seventh, which I'll get to. And Richard Comey, even though he lost, what, 11 rounds, maybe even all 12 rounds, he deserves massive respect because no, at never any point did he, uh, never at any point did he look like he was going to give in. No, not even a cent of that. He always was always trying, always trying to land an equalizer early in the fight, in the mid rounds of the fight, even at the end in the closing seconds of the 12th round. He was still trying, still just trying to get something done, and it deserves massive respect. Richard Comey showed the heart and the bravery of a true African warrior, something that Nicholas Walters, for example, he couldn't do that. So Richard Comey, take a bow. It's uh, To see that kind of heart is truly inspiring. But to talk about the fight itself, when the first round has started, I think the first thing that was immediately apparent was the size difference between these two guys. Lomachenko is a small lightweight. He's a small man. Richard Comey, on the other hand, is a pretty decent sized lightweight. However, despite that, Lomachenko was able to hold his own on the inside, in the clinches, able to match and maybe even uh, be superior, be stronger than Richard Comey. And I think this is potentially down to the, the wrestling background of Lomachenko. You even see videos of him in his uh, training camps wrestling with bigger guys. And he has an understanding of grappling technique and it just goes to show that experience and knowledge and good technique can overcome the kind of physiological advantages that your opponent may have. So it's very impressive to see that from a, a small lightweight, as I say, in Lomachenko. And now, it, a lot of Lomachenko's game, it starts with the lead hand. Not only does he use his lead hand, but his strategy is to get around your lead hand. And that's what he did to Richard Comey. And he would, he'd, he'd bait the lead hand from Richard Comey and he has so many ways of countering it. And so if that lead hand is the setup for your weapons, your likelihood of them throwing those punches is lesser because you can't set them up. Whenever you go to jab, the jab gets taken away, you get countered with a left hand, with a right hand, to the head, to the body. And so it can make an opponent gun shy. However, Richard Comey, showing the heart that he did, always looking to invest in the body. And he did land some some pretty decent body shots because, I mean, it was the only available target. But you got someone who is a high-energy fighter like Lomachenko. You know, it, the old saying is invest to the into the body. Get some, uh, put some water in his basement. Make it hard for him to move around. Did it have an effect on Lomachenko? No, not really. Lomachenko looked the same in the first round as he did in the 12th. Or, same in the top round as he did in the first, rather. Just the energy levels of this guy are just insane, but it's the mental energy as well. Um, but Richard Comey always looking to adapt the way he can. I feel like the point I made in the pre-fight video was that Richard Comey, he knows what Lomachenko is doing, but he just can't act fast enough to keep up. And that's what it was. Lomachenko just, he gets the momentum and he just snowballs and he's unstoppable he's relentless and from early on Richard Comey was clocked by Lomachenko for example at the end of the second round and now he's he got a bit reckless and uh, this is Richard Comey and he was moving laterally almost like pivoting on the front foot and he wasn't controlling the space he wasn't controlling Lomachenko didn't faint and Lomachenko just was drilling him with punches sent him into the ropes and his legs buckled and the excuse me and then the fourth round was another big one for Lomachenko. Just landed dozens and dozens of clean and unanswered, unanswered punches, which is, you know, it's it was uh, it was tough stuff to watch, you know, if, if you're a, a Richard Comey fan because he was just getting tattooed with punches. And then in the seventh round, 
Richard Comey was dropped while against the ropes. He was kind of caught lacking in the clinch. Uh, Lomachenko got some space. He doesn't need much. He's a small guy. He's very compact, but he got the space. Just landed this very tight left hook. And the thing was, there wasn't that much weight in the punch. It almost looked like an arm punch. But it just caught Richard Comey uh, lacking, as I say, and um, didn't expect the punch. He took it, and he was flat on his back. Managed to get up, though. But Lomachenko just carried on setting about Richard Comey and was even at some points gesturing to Richard Comey's corner to stop the fight because his legs were completely gone. So um, Lomachenko almost showing mercy, I want to say. And now, it, it, what is it? Why does Lomachenko do this? Is it real mercy? Is it gamesmanship? Is it kind of a way of him saying, I'm so, I'm so many leagues above you that I don't have to finish you? I wonder where it is, but nevertheless, I do feel like Lomachenko could have uh, got Richard Comey out of there. He was able to land easily enough, not just with single shots or double shots, but with long combinations of punches, hooks and uppercuts, head and body. He's now able to land so much, but he didn't close the show on Richard Comey. Richard Comey has good chin, clearly has bags of heart, but... It's almost like it sends a message to Teofimo Lopez in particular. Because Teofimo Lopez struggled with Nakatani. And Lomachenko stopped him. He's now just gone 12, yes, and battered Richard Comey, even though Comey was stopped in two by Teofimo Lopez. So it's almost like he's, he's sending a message to, to Lopez saying, I'm coming, you know, I will get my revenge. And, you know, you've got to love these kind of rivalries. Very interesting stuff. But just to get back to the fight, it went all the 12. And I pretty much had Lomachenko whitewashing Richard Comey. I, I couldn't really give Comey a round. Maybe one if you like felt sorry for him. But even when Lomachenko was taking a break, he was still in full control. And there was never a part where you thought, oh, maybe this fight can turn around a little bit. Never that. And this just goes to show the, the talent and... Just the level that Lomachenko is on. And now, all I'm going to say is appreciate it while it's here. Because fighters, even the fighters in the level of a Lomachenko, they don't last forever. So you have to appreciate them while they're still fighting. You know, not just Lomachenko. Lomachenko and Usyk and Terence Crawford. These special fighters, appreciate them while they're here. And... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to add, to be honest. It'll be interesting to see who Lomachenko fights next. He fought Nakatani, dealt with him. Richard Comey's a step up. Where does he go next? Does he fight Cambosos Jr.? Does he maybe fight Tiafimo Lopez, even though Lopez doesn't have the belts anymore? Who else is there at lightweight? Let me just get a box wreck. Javonta Davis, I could you imagine Davis going in against Lomachenko? I sure as hell couldn't. They've been ducking that fight for years. And I think I don't want to say for good reason, because there's never there's never a good reason to duck. You're in the fight game, you gotta fight. But I can't see that fight happening anytime soon. If Vasil Lomachenko can get the Cambosos fight, I think that's a good fight. But I think stylistically maybe Lomachenko has him. The Tiafimo Lopez rematch, I think, is very interesting. That's one I've been calling for for a while now. I feel as if it was the end of the fight was interesting enough to warrant a rematch. Devin Haney, he's got the size, he's got the athleticism. I don't. I think Devin Haney's still a bit green, though. From what I've seen of the Joseph Diaz, the Jojo Diaz fight, he looked better. I, I was somewhat impressed with Devin Haney. You know, I think he's going in the right direction. Isaac Cruz, maybe he's as Kind of, I think um, he's given a good account of himself against Davis. Maybe that fight will happen. Um, Ryan Garcia. Who knows what Ryan Garcia is doing? Who knows? That's all I'm going to say to that guy. Yeah, who will Vasil Lomachenko fight next? It's interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. Who would you like to see him fight next? Who do you think he'll fight next? What did you make of this fight? What did you make of my opinion of this fight? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Like, comment, share, subscribe. 
if you'll be so kind. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you on the next video.